Hey everyone! Well, it's certainly been a long time since I last made a new vid, and I think everyone needs a good fix for me. Okay, so today I did promise several weeks ago I was supposed to make the tour video, uh, so this will be it. The reason why I haven't been making new videos is because I'm certainly very busy, especially this week, since my brother is getting married. So the purpose of this video is to show everyone my entire collection of my tarantulas, since a lot of people kept asking me, like, do I have a certain tea? Well, this whole video will uh, show you exactly what I have and what I don't have. Now, uh, not much has changed since my collection. I did lose my Holothelli NC uh, a couple of days ago. Um, Turned out Olive and my Green Bottle Blue uh, female uh, two weeks ago. I think I mentioned that. And I did get a new T to replace my HNC, which was a Hapalapama Von Worthy. Anyway, uh, this video is going to show you all of my uh, collection as of August 25th, 2014. And I'm going to show you my non-inverts too. So, this video will be divided into two parts since I know it's going to be a long one. Alright, so please enjoy. Okay, this is a tea you haven't really seen in a while in my collection. This is a 5-inch female Aphonopalma Simani Costa Rican Zebra. Okay, tea number two, you can probably see over here. This is my four and a half inch female Nandu Colorado Volosis, which is the Brazilian black and white tarantula. One of the worst hairs I've experienced, and I do have an allergic reaction to it where I break out in hives if uh, she hairs me. T number three is my five and a half inch female Lassiodora difficilis, which is the Brazilian fire red bird eater and if you notice that in a previous molt well two molts ago she lost her pedipulp and now she's slowly regaining it so another molt or two and it'll be just like the one on her right this is T number four this is Okani my seven inch female Pocotheria vitata formerly Patterseni Ghost Ornamental. This one here is T number 5, Chiniochilis Morenus, red form. The OBT. This is a, eh, I would say a 5 inch female named Georgia. Star attraction in my feeding video, it's a lot hungrier than my past Carmela. This one here is Ricardo. He is my male Aphonopelma calcodes, desert blonde. I have uh, three of these guys. I have a mature female and a little sling. He's immature yet, so he probably will mature the next molt or two, whenever that is. Uh, these guys grow so slow, but hopefully I'll... Uh, be meeting him. Okay, so this is the recent edition that I got maybe last month or two. So this used to be Angelo's uh, rose hair, the Gramostola rosea. The classic tea that everyone has to have in their collection and the most widely available. I have five of them. I have three normal forms like the one you see here and two red forms that you'll see in the later part of the video. Taking a break from the teas, so I'm going to be showing you a few of my centipedes. Uh, this one, I'm not sure which one this is. I did have a alternans and suspenips. I think this is a suspenips in there. But unfortunately, uh, <laughs> you dug so deep you can't even see it. But this one here, this is a probable female. And this one's about like six inches. It's really big. Alright, this is another Scolopandra of Spineeps. This is the one I first bought from Angelo. And I later bought his other collection of two. This one here... Yeah, this one is the S. Alternans, the giant Haitian centipede. And I could tell right away that that is an Alternans because you can see how the color is on this uh, centipede. You can see the mahogany color versus the little black color on the subspeedeeps. 
All right, so this one here is my other Scolopendra alternans, the Haitian centipede. Now, I have reason to believe uh, that uh, she could be gravid. I think when I first showed you the 13 uh, editions video, uh, I think we did see this one have eggs. So hopefully um, I'll see some centipede links come up here. And I do have another alternance on this shelf here, but I'm going to be showing you two later. Okay, now back to spiders. Now, I've never actually seen this one up close in person, and I have actually no idea what, I, what it looks like. So this is a unidentified trapdoor from Madagascar. It's supposed to be very large. And it has a body shape of a tarantula, if you can believe that. Almost as bulky as a 3 inch T. Uh, fortunately, I don't really see it. Maybe I'll catch this on a nighttime video. I think maybe that's what I'll do, is start making these. It's been really busy and I have to get up early in the morning to cut grass. But, uh, don't really see this one. Okay. No. Started to get into scorpions now. Back in the groove. Now oh, this one here is a adult female, a Babicurus jacksoni, which is the rusty thick tail scorpion. I would say that is a good two two and a half inches. That's the maximum uh, size that a B jacksoni gets. The gigas gets up to three, three and a half. It's a little bit larger. Alright, so the top shelf is done. And now, I'm starting to give you an idea of what I have so far. Five centipedes, one true spider, seven tarantulas, and one scorpion. Just on that shelf. Seed number eight, a very beautiful, probably suspect female, Monosontropus balfouri, uh, which is the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. At number nine, we tuck down into a corner, is Star. She is my four and a half inch adult female Cherniochilis Lagardi, which is the Fort Hall Baboon. You can probably see her abdomen. Uh, no, you really can't. A lesser defensive cousin of the OBT. T number 10 is one of my G. rosea females. This is a red face named Lois after Family Guy. Just going to show you what she looks like. She's not even full grown yet. That's like three and a half inches. They get a little bit larger like your typical normal form, so the ones you see at the pet store. They do a lot of webbing, which is really cool, because you don't really see rose hairs do a lot of webbing. Well, yeah. Good luck seeing what this tea is. Well, actually, she made a nice opening so I can see her all the time. <laughs> so this is tea number 11. Uh, this is a four and a half inch female, Phlogius crassipeeps, which is the Queensland whistling spider from Australia. only have two uh, of these Australian species. And very cool. Just loves to burrow as a typical old world, but it's very nice that she actually made a little opening so I can watch her. Makes slightly a better display species. Ortiz, please. Uh, number 12 over here is Zafina. Suspect male, Pocotheria hanuma villa semica, which is the Ramash Warm ornamental. Uh, unlucky number 13, a very beautiful tea at that, if I can try to find her. Uh, she's my Lampropelma velociopes, the Singapore violet or Singapore blue. Ah, she's right there. Alright, let me get the light on her. 
you can just make out the blue and I'm happy to say that this is a suspect female, I eventually sexed her and I'm probably about like 80% certain which is pretty good. This is a 100% confirmed female. This is my Vicalaria Leta, the Puerto Rican pink toe. One of the most defensive Avix I have in my collection. And definitely not one I would want to handle again. Now this is the very large Avic I have in my collection. Uh, this is Cat, my 6 inch female giant Peru pink toe. A Vicularia Jurunensis. Thought this was an Urtican several years ago because when I bought her from uh, TC it was sold to me as one. But when I start looking at the Jurunensis uh, pictures it looked more like Cat than an Urtican's. So yeah, that's her. She's okay, she's a little mild-mannered, but a little bit more defensive than my Avic Avic. T number 16. This is the very first tarantula that I bought from Tarantula Canada. This is Yasmin, my four and a half inch female Eupalestris Campestratus, which is the pink zebra beauty. 17. Everyone loves this tarantula, and this is pretty much my all-time favorite handling one. Uh, this is Amber. She is my Euathlis species red, also known as the Chilean fire rump. An adult female around two and a half inches. And that's her enclosure. It's pretty much a two liter plastic shoebox enclosure with air holes, a little water dish, and some substrate. A little bit moist uh, since I just watered it. Uh, yesterday. This is one of three uh, spiders in my collection that freshly molted before I started recording the video. Uh, this one here is Chimera. She is of course a hybrid. Uh, she is a Bomi cross Bumgartenai, which we call it the Mexican Orange Beauty. She is about like three and a half inches confirmed female. Very, very gorgeous looking Brachypalma, but I'm not going to even breeding her uh, because simply because she's a hybrid and I don't want any hybrids out in the hobby, especially for Brachypalmas since uh, they're critically endangered. Number 19, uh, this one I showed on Mythbuster video 49 that she freshly molted. Uh, this is the female Brachypalma erratum that I got from Bruce, Arachnophiliax. Uh, remember the big one that passed away, and this is the replacement. Sounding around like three and a half inches. And this is T number 20. Very <laughs> fat. Male. Uh, Last Eudora Klugi, which is the Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. I named this guy Necroth uh, from Unreal Tournament. Alright, now for some other uh, inverts. This is a centipedaline. This is the sixth one that I own. Uh, this is the different one. This is, this is not a Suspenips or Alternans. Uh, this is a Residia longipeeps, also known as the African olive centipede. You can probably make out its tail right over here. Oh no, there's the body. Yeah, it's about a half an inch or three quarters of an inch. I'm supposedly told that these don't get very large. They get up to what, a three to four inches. But it'd really be cool to own. All right, this is another true spider, the second one in my collection. This one here is a very, very cool one. Uh, this is a Erysis Vulcanari, which is the Greek ladybird spider, red form. So if this spider ends up being a female, uh, she'll look exactly like you see on video, completely black. 
and the males are just going to be exactly like this one except the abdomen is going to be a dark red with uh, white dots similar to what you would see on a ladybug. Yeah, she is around, I would say, a good half an inch now. But what's really interesting is that I've got a molt to share with you. This is the second out of my three spiders that molted. Maybe more, I have to check. Now, if you guys remember my Sicarius terosus, the six-eyed sand spider, you can see the big difference in its size compared to what it was before. You can, last time I've seen it, you can just barely make out what it was, but now you can see it grew at least three quarters to an inch right now. Very surprised. You can really see, oh, she's right beside her molts to show you how fast they grow. Wow, that is a very fast growing spider. And not to be trifled with, since this is the second most dangerous spider in the world, closely related to the uh, brown recluse spider, only the venom is a lot worse. And a lot of people ask me about this substrate, and they should ask me to put it on sand. Well, this substrate here is a sand eco-earth mix, 20% uh, eco-earth and 80% sand. Next up is Terra de Terrible. She is my Siphonesia species, black and silver trapdoor spider from Africa. You don't really see her that much, but she's been featured in recent uh, feeding videos, and pretty much everyone knows what she looks like. Really, really cool, especially now that uh, she's been uh, more hungry recently. I think the reason why she's been absent is because uh, she was probably in pre-molt and she wasn't really hungry for eating. Alright, this one here um, is a tarantula. If I can just show it to you. Very big one at that. Uh, I would say around 5 inches. A female Hysterocrates gigas, which is the Cameroon red baboon. I think I named her Elena. T number 23 is my immature male, likely penultimate, and next molt I probably wouldn't be surprised if he would be mature. Zenithus Imanus, which is the Colombian lesser black T. Currently he's around four and a half inches. T number 24 is my female Phonopalma calcodes. Desert Blonde, I named Marilyn the second. Number 25, one of my best looking brachypalmas so far, is my mature female named Petunia. She is a Mexican pink, brachypalma classy. All right, T number 26, unfortunately she's hiding, so you really, really can't see her. Now, this one here is my Circanthus Livingstoni, which is the Livingston's tarantula. I brought this one, I think, four years ago from Tarantula Canada, sold to me as an unknown species. But later we determined to be a seedling stony. Very cool, uh, six inches. Anyway, so now it's uh, 9.53, I guess I'm going to go to work and then I'll continue filming as I get back so you might see a little drastic change in lighting and I do apologize for the video uh, after this point. One of my favorite pets here is Maggie, my 10 year old female Chih Tzu. Hey Maggie. Okay so this is T number 27 you can see uh, from the ventral side, you see the epigastric furrow in between the book lungs. So this is the newest one in my collection. You haven't seen this one yet. I got this one about two weeks ago. Now I'm assuming that this is a Haplopalma bonworthy 
uh, the Chinese Earth Tiger, but the more I look at it right now, could actually be the Thailand Zebra, Haplopalma obostriatum. Now this could be the regular morph, I think. Yeah, as soon as I open up the enclosure, there she went. <laughs> Very nice female. The 28th tea in my collection here is a Tapnikinius gigas, the orange tree spider. This is a three and a half inch female named Barb. Orange ball of fiery fury. <laughs> Very skittish and defensive arboreal and probably the most fastest one that I've experienced. Number 29 is the second largest salmon pink bird eater that I have in my collection. I have three of them. All of them are females. This is Daniela and she's around I would say a good five inches half grown of what they normally uh, should grow into. Dirty 30. <laughs> this one here is my Grandma Sola Rosea, Chilean Rose. This is Talia, the one that refused food for about eight months until all of a sudden she just got back her hunger. Here's Wendy, settling quite nicely. This is a four and a half maybe close to five inch female Gramasola pulcropes aka the Chaco Goldeny. This one here is really gorgeous. This is my immature male Formictopus erratus also known as the Cuban bronze. Now they got their common name from the bronze like carapace. Don't know if you can actually see very cool. His name is Don Manuel. Alright, so these two are true spiders. These are another trapdoors. Uh, this is a Darmarcha species Indonesia, commonly called the Golden Knee Trapdoor. I've got two females in here. Uh, you can barely see one of them. If I could just make it out, since it's very hard to see trapdoors. Uh, I got one hiding down below. You can probably make out its leg. And this is the other one. Slightly more visible, but not by a long shot. These are the ones that have the huge uh, clariserae. And attack quite nicely in the feeding videos. Yeah, both of them are around like two and a half inch females. This is a pretty neat little scorpion. This is a Titius stigmurus, which is known as the slender black scorpion. Now this one here is dangerously venomous, level 4 out of 5. One of my star attractions in my feeding videos, especially my scorpions, since this is the one I can usually get to eat, no problem. Gotta be careful with this guy. Very fast, and... Don't think it's full grown yet. But certainly very, very fat, and... Quite active, too. Okay, so I showed you a level 4 scorpion out of 5. Now this one here is a level 5 on 5. Very dangerous scorpion to keep. Uh, this is a Androctonus bicolor which is called the African Black Thick Tail. This is a male. And you can really see how thick his tail is compared to his pedipalps or his claws. You see how narrow and small they are? Whenever you see that, that means it's, you're dealing with a really venomous uh, scorpion. And there we go. That's uh, not going to play with him further. Yeah, seems to enjoy it. This is number 33. Uh, this is a unidentified bracket palma species, possibly a Kallenbergi. 
It seems like a Kalenbergi because uh, it doesn't really have the blackness in the carapace that the B. Vagans has. I'd say it's around a good, I would say, two inches. Could also be even a true Verdesi. But I guess we'll see uh, as uh, time goes by. But a very nice bracket palma and certainly a very good eater. Alright, this one here is Alberto. He is my immature male Brachypalma albiceps, the Mexican gold red rump. Hopefully when he matures I'm going to be pairing uh, him up with uh, Stacy, my larger female. Number 35 is Willow. She is my 4 inch female, Lassiodora Fracta, the Brazilian smoky gray bird eater. They get up to having the same size as the El Par Habana, usually on average 8 to 10 inches. She's about 4. And recently molted. You probably can recognize the leg pattern on this pokey. This is my male, Apocotheria rufolata, the red slate ornamental, that I got from Mac and Cass. He's about like three and a half inches right now. All right, this is number 37. This is my female, Juvie, Pocotheria fasciata, also known as the Sri Lankan ornamental. So I named her Lucky, and if you guys are new to my channel, you might be wondering why I named her Lucky. Uh, because I've gotten seven of these species and the first six ended up being males. So seventh try is a lucky number and this one ends up being a female. This is scorpion number four in my collection. This is a Hadogenes Placidens, also known as the Flat Rock. This is a adult female. And no, Irene you're not going to be getting anywhere. <laughs> also a very cool scorpion. Great for beginners since uh, their sting is not very potent at all and they're generally pretty docile and they get really huge too. They get almost as big as emperors. Around six to seven inches is pretty common for these. Ah, number 38 over here. Uh, this is Nerissa, my female Cherniochilis Lagardi, the Fort Hall baboon. When I first purchased this tarantula, I thought for sure that this was a Cherniochilis cordatus. Uh, the reason why I thought that was because uh, she had very dark colors, and then until she finally molted, I could right away tell the light brown colors, and I thought for sure that this is a Lagardi, and you can note that her pattern on her abdomen kind of reminds you of a little smiley face. Very, very cool. Number 39 is my Pocotheria Hanuma Villa Samika, the warm wash warm ornamental. Now, this likely might be a probable female, which would be really cool since I have a male of the species. Back three years ago, here in Canada, these were crazy expensive. I remember paying uh, Zafina $215. Now, I got this one, I think, sometime last year. And she was about 65 bucks. So it goes to show you how a lot of people that are starting to breed these uh, can certainly lower the price down, considering that P. Metallica was crazy expensive back ten years ago now you can get them for around a hundred to hundred and twenty five dollars this one here is T number forty this is another controversial tarantula in my collection as this is a hybrid meaning crossbreed so this is a <laughs> I like to call it the ghost fringed ornamental as it is a cross between a pokey ornata and a pokey vitata 
uh, this is Amy. I thought for sure that this was a male, but now that I look at it more, this actually might be a confirmed female. It's around, I would say, a good three and a half to four inches, so I think this one might be due for a rehouse very soon and house them in those uh, one gallon Rubbermaid jars. Uh, that I usually house my arboreals in. Very, very nice pokey to own. But again, it's it's a hybrid, and you could tell right away it's not a real Vitata, as Vitatas don't have the yellow bands under their legs, but Ornatas do. This one here is number 41. <laughs> a very, very fat female. Chalco Golni, Grandma Silva Poker Piece. This is Wendy's sister, named Princess Peach, of course from the Super Mario Brothers series. Yeah, very, very nice. And she's fat from all those super worms she's been eating. Now I think everyone loves this tea and probably knows that this is one of my most <laughs> aggressive ones. One of three that I own that are very defensive and I'll show it to you on video. Now behold the spot from hell. <laughs> so this is Isabella. Uh, she is my Formictopus cancerides, the Haitian brown bird eater. When I first got her in 2009, she was a half an inch electric blue sling. Now, five years later, she's around five and a half, close to six inches, and not even fully grown yet. Very, very defensive terrestrial. Alrighty, so we have a lot of slings to show you. So, number four. T three. Uh, this is my freshly molted Pocotheria striata. This is the Mysore ornamental. The molt is over here. I got three of these lovely beauties. I have a mature female, a mature male. And this pretty little sling that you see at the bottom. And number 44. One of my favorite tees. Next to my Safaska Lowland. This one here is a Safaska Highland. Which is the Ivory Highland ornamental. Very cool. Now I was supposed to get a female from tanglesandwebs.com but hopefully I'll see her at the upcoming Reptile Expo in November. Very nice specimen. Yeah, 45 and 46 are my pair of hopefully sex pair of Pocotheria tigrina wesseli which is the Wessel Tiger ornamental. I have a little sling over here, and another one up here, starting to go really quickly. Uh, a little bit moist, but anyway, uh, this is my Polynobius muticus, also known as the King Baboon. Haven't really seen much of this one in many of my feeding videos. Hopefully I'll try to get this one to eat some time. And next one here is a Lassia Dorides striatus, which is the Goliath Stripe Plague. It's a massive T that gets through having a 7 inch leg span. This one here is a dwarf species that gets to about two and a half to three inches. 
Uh, this is a Eupalestris uh, Wagenbergi, also known as the White Collared. I gotta watch her weight because uh, she's pretty fat from all those little small crickets that she eats. A very hungry eater. But they don't get anywhere, nowhere as big as the Capristratus, the PCB. Uh, next one up here, starting to go really fast in my collection. Uh, this is an Ephobopus Moranus, also known as the Skeleton. Now my skeleton actually is starting to gain her adult colors at this stage over here. I'm just going to show it to you. If you can start to make out the patterns. I don't want to open it up too much. Hang on. Let me just, there we go. Yeah, so it still has the sling colors, but if you notice, starting to get the skeleton patterns on the legs as they usually do. There we go. Sorry for the bad lighting guys. Alrighty. And the last part of these guys here to the tour for part one are my Tapnikinius pair of uh, spiderlings. Now both of these I eventually sexed uh, to be Females, probable. Uh, this one here is. Let me just close my light. Tapnikinius elenae, which is the gold tree spider. And this one I really love, and I'm so happy I bought this one. Tapnikinius latipeeps, which is the ghost tree spider. And I just thought to check on her, and unfortunately. Yeah, she didn't make it. Uh, that sucks because I really enjoyed watching her uh, eat on video. Okay, so unfortunately it sucks to see that my Laddie Peeps didn't make it, but I really have to get this off my chest because... Uh, okay, I'm about to break down and hopefully don't cry on video. <laughs> Try to hold together, but anyways... <sighs> How, how am I going to tell you this, guys? This is this is awful, and <sighs> yeah, Curly Sue passed away, and she was a specialty in my collection. <laughs> oh wow! Here we go. I have the waterworks. Basically, she is my curly hair that I've owned since 19 years now. 19 years is a very long time that you had a tarantula. And basically, when I bought her that year, back then, way back when, uh, she was an adult. And I knew that the time would come that she would pass on because you've probably seen her in recent uh, tour videos that she was just slow, not moving and stuff. And finally, about two days ago, yeah, she passed away. And you know, it sucks. <laughs> Because she was like the Zilla of my collection. You know, who cares if it's a Goliath bird eater or curly hair. You know, it's, it's a tea that you have a lot of sentimental value to. And yeah. Yeah, she passed away and it's kind of sad to see her go. But anyways, uh, she is in a better place. I took the very good care of her when she was alive. Heck, she survived 18 years even more than that I can just imagine her being well into the t higher 20s maybe even low 30s but that's the lifespan of most curly hairs and you know I'm completely fine with it and you know uh, I, I did my best I took in the very good care of her and now the legacy of curly Sue will live on in the form of my other two curly hairs um, Aragog and the other one, which I'll probably name Sue the second, uh, the one I got from Angelo. Anyway, so this completes the first part of the tour video. I might actually split into three parts. So I've done this two shells right here, which consisted of six centipedes, six true spiders, 51 T's, and four scorpions. 
Alright everyone, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Wait for part two.